Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I will be talking about a farm that you can do in order to get one item that you can then sell on most realms for at least 1 million gold. And this is really something that right now I've been able to make a lot of gold with. So the item that we're going to talk about in today's video is a rare BOE pattern from Classic Quo, and this is the pattern for the rich purple silk shirt. So this is a world drop, so it means that it will drop from many different sources, including random mobs, random rares, random chests, random lockboxes, and so it makes this item pretty difficult to actually farm. So this item right now, as you can see, is selling for a lot of gold and has also a really nice sell rate. So on average, on European realms, you will be able to sell it for 1 million gold, and on North American realms for 1.5 million gold, and the sell rate is 0.03, which is extremely, extremely good. I've personally been able to sell it already for 1 million gold, and I know many people who've been able to sell it also for more than that, so it's definitely something that will sell if you manage to get it. The reason why this pattern is currently selling for that much gold and has such a great sell rate for that value is simply because since patch 10.5, we have some new profession achievements and the one for tailoring will require you to craft all these different shirts and pair of tuxedo pants and everything. And as you can see, it includes the rich purple silk shirt. So it means that if you want to complete this achievement, you will actually need to get the pattern and craft it yourself. So this is why there is more demand for this item at the moment. So as I mentioned, this item is pretty hard to farm because again, this is a world drop. But from my experience and also from the comments that you can find on Wohead and from also the experience from people who've tried to farm this item and that were successful at getting it, one of the best location is by far a dungeon that I'm sure you're very familiar with and this is Uldaman. The reason why is because, first of all, it can drop from some of the mobs in the dungeon. Also, inside of the dungeon, you will be able to get different types of chests. And inside these different chests, this is where you really have a high chance at actually getting this pattern. And especially the chest that is just at the end of the dungeon, just after the last boss, Arkadas. Here, you will really be able to have a higher chance. Again, this is a higher chance compared to 0.001, so it's still very, very, very low. But this is a little bit higher than in most other scenarios. So when it comes to the best route in order to farm this item, what I would recommend you is when you enter, go directly here on the left, and then you want to gather all the mobs that are around here. Then you want to go make your way here, kill this boss, and then try to gather all the mobs that are here. Then you want to gather all the mobs in this area and kill them here because otherwise some of them will just go back to their normal locations and you won't be able to kill them later on. Then after that, you want to make your way just here, go circle, make sure to grab all the different scorpions that are here. And then you want to go in this part because just here you will have a chance at getting a first chest. So this is why you really want to make sure to go in this room right here. Then you want to kill all the mobs grab the chest and then you want to make your way here go up until here grab all the mobs and then sometimes here you have a second chest so kill all the mobs here and make sure to open this second chest after that you want to go back go here kill the boss and then you want to make your way in this over part here you want to go directly here and then you want to grab all the mobs that are here all the mobs that are here and then you will have to summon some mobs in this room so Make sure to summon the mobs and then you want to kill all the different mobs that you gathered. When all the mobs are done, you then want to go in this room all around here and then you will arrive in the final boss room. So here you will have again to click on something in order to summon the boss. Make sure to do that before all the mobs reach you because otherwise they will be annoying and interrupt the summoning. Then when the boss is about to be summoned, just kill all the mobs, kill the boss, and then you want to go in the last room. And here you will be able to open the last chest. And then if you're playing on a druid, all you have to do is to click on teleport Moonglade or teleport the Emerald Dream. And then like that, you will be able to then teleport back at the entrance of Uldaman. Just make sure to reset before you enter again. And if you are not playing on a druid, 
What you can do is go in the custom search. You want to start a group, click for instance here, list, and then you want to leave the group. And like that, you will be teleported back after one minute outside of the dungeon. And so if you're doing this technique, what I would recommend you to do is basically when you arrive in this part right here, make sure to leave the group. So like that, when you kill the last boss and you open the chest, you will directly be teleported out of the dungeon. So as you can see, really, if you're doing it that way and you're not grabbing every mob in the dungeon and you're really just focusing on these few mobs and also on the chests in particular, you will really be able normally to clear everything pretty fast. Usually it takes me like just a few minutes in order to clear all these different mobs and then to make my way to the last boss. So again, try to follow really all the different instructions that I've given you because like that it will help you to win even more time. Try also as much as possible as you can see when you can to hide behind pillars in order for the mobs to all gather around you. So like that you can kill them more easily and you don't have to run around. Of course, if you prefer, you can just kill the mobs again and again and again. Uh, and like that you can go like maybe faster, but me, I like to just get some groups of mobs, kill them and then go to the next groups of mobs. So. This is really the way I'm doing it. And again, as you can see, normally it shouldn't really take you long. And this is by far, in my opinion, the best route if you're really just after this pattern in particular. Now, there are a few things that you need to take into consideration if you want to do this farm as efficient as possible. The first thing, of course, is if you're not paying on a rogue, you will need to buy some of the different keys from the auction house so you can also craft them yourself in order to then be able to unlock the different chests inside the dungeon, because some of them will be locked. So try to make sure to have some of them and like that you will be able to loot these different chests. Also, one thing that is gonna make a big difference is the speed that you have. And so try as much as possible to get a speed set in order for you to get a big boost. So as you can see, for instance, here I have 35%, you can probably go to up to 40% right now. And all you have to do really is again to get all these different armor pieces with some speed on it. So probably the easiest way I would say is to simply go on the auction house. And when you're on the auction house, what you want to do is go have a look at the latest green and blue BOEs. And here you want to try to find the ones with some speed on it. So sometimes you will be lucky and you will find some for a really, really cheap price. But then keep in mind a lot of people know that there is a higher demand for these speed items. And so usually what they do is a, they simply buy them and then they sell them for a higher price. So this is unfortunately something that will make it sometimes a little bit more expensive to get this type of sets. But again, it's still a really good way to get more speed. So you can either go try to find the speed sets yourself or buy them for a little bit more gold from the people who already flipped these different items. Also keep in mind, for instance, if you're playing on a play character, you can buy any of these different items, even male, leather, or cloth, and you will still be able to get the speed buff. So for instance, here, as you can see, I have a lot of these different cloth items and I'm still getting the speed buff. So try to do that. And it means that again, if for instance, every plate item is super expensive, maybe go look at cloth, leather, and male, and you will be able to find sometimes some cheaper ones. And of course it, is the same for every armors. The only one that won't be able to do that is simply cloth. Next to that, of course, you also want to get some food buff in order to go faster. So here, for instance, as you can see with this one, you will be able to then get a speed buff each time you kill a creature. So this is really useful because like that inside the dungeon, you will be able to just go faster just by killing some of the different enemies. And that's also why you probably saw that I'm trying to kill sometimes like random mobs and I'm not looting them simply because I'm trying to go as fast as possible. So really make sure to also grab this food buff in order to go faster. Also keep in mind when you're doing this farm, you will receive some of these different strong iron lock boxes. And I would really recommend you to just open them again using some of the different keys that you can get from the auction house because inside these different lockboxes, you will have a chance at also getting some really interesting items, including, I believe, the pattern for the rich purple silk shirt. So definitely something that you also want to always keep with you and open. Don't delete them because like that, you will have even more chance of getting something interesting. 
And finally, I would say that again, doing it on a Druid is probably going to be the best because as you can see, you can teleport from the dungeon directly to the Emoldrin or Moonglade and then back to the dungeon, which honestly makes a big difference and will allow you to win a lot of time. So this is definitely something that I would recommend you to do, but if you don't have a Druid, it's fine. You can always do it on another character and again, use the group search in order to then be teleported outside of the dungeon. Then I would also recommend you to get one add-on and this add-on is right here scrap because basically you will get a lot of loot and most of them will be things that you want to vendor. So what you can do with scrap is basically when you're trying to vendor items, you can put them here and set as junk. And like that, each time you will just open the vendor, you will directly sell all these different items. So this is something that will make you win a lot of time. And like that, you don't have to spend too much time just selling all of them each time. So I would really recommend you to get this side on in order again to sell them faster. Also keep in mind when you're doing this farm, you will have a chance at getting some over BOEs from the dungeon and some of them are extremely rare and extremely valuable. As you can see, some of them will sell for more than a million gold. So this is definitely something that is a nice addition. Keep in mind, these are extremely, extremely hard to get and this is why they're so expensive. But this is something to keep in mind. And again, sometimes you will be lucky enough to also get these different items when farming for the pattern. And here, if you're also playing on a Druid, what I would recommend you to do is to go and use the Moonblade teleport simply because when you are here in this house, just next to where you will be teleported, you can go and talk to this vendor, Genia Sunshadow. And sometimes she will be selling the formal dengue. This is a cosmetic item that you can then sell on most rounds for 500 to 1 million uh, gold. So this is definitely something that you want to check. This is an item that is probably up only once every two or three months from this vendor. And as soon as someone buys it, it's gone. So of course it's very hard to get, but as like that, you can easily sell all your junk and then just check if the item is here. And if you're extremely lucky, you might find it on this vendor. So when it comes to how to sell this item, I would recommend you to be very strategic on the realm that you're targeting, because if you're trying to sell it on a low pop realm, for instance, it might work, but it will probably take a lot of time. So what I would recommend you to do is to go on the Undermine Exchange and here you can see the value, the quantity on each realm in your region. And so try to really target the hyper realms where there are not too many available and where the value is really good. So for instance, here, as you can see, some of them have really good value and they're almost non available. So this is probably going to be the fastest way for you to like sell these different items. Again, you can sell them on any realm but we're really talking about trying to sell them as efficiently as possible. And lastly, what I would of course recommend you to do is to also sometimes try to flip these different items. So for instance, you can see sometimes you will have some that are pretty cheap. What you can do is again, buy them and then sell them back for twice the value. This is what I've done so far and I've been able to make a lot of profit like that. So sometimes you will find some of them for less than like 400,000 gold, 300,000 gold. Definitely when this happens, what I would say is just buy it. As you can see here, for instance, on this realm, on North America, 15 hours ago, one was being sold for 500 gold. Uh, so really just make sure to have a look. And if you find anything, I would say below 400,000 gold, probably it's gonna be profitable because you can then easily resell it on any realm for up to 1 million gold. So this is again, something that is always, let's say a little bit risky because you have to invest a lot of gold, but never this item is gonna lose a lot of value because again, this is a world drop. This is not something that you can farm easily. And so the value is probably always going to remain probably higher than like five, 600,000 gold on average. So that's pretty much it for today's video. Keep in mind, of course, you have other ways to farm this item. This is a world drop. You can go in over dungeons and maybe you will be lucky and get it there. But really, I just wanted to insist on the fact that Uldaman is probably the best chance that you have if you actually want to farm this item actively. I will be back very soon with more guides and more videos. And in the meantime, I wish you all a great evening. Bye.